So one of the most common yet least understood areas of investing is that known as investing in REITs. And in this video, I'm going to be clarifying some things that you need to know before you even put a dime into this type of investment. Now owning a REIT, otherwise known as a real estate investment trust, can be a great alternative to owning hard real estate assets like a rental property. With a REIT, you don't have to deal with the hassle of managing tenants, dealing with repairs, or even building up a down payment for that matter, because it trades like a stock and you can simply invest what you want. Now there are actually many benefits to owning REITs in your investment portfolio and one of the reasons behind that is for the high yield dividends that they offer. REITs are able to generate tons of cash from their monthly rental property income which actually makes them a great passive investing strategy. Secondly, buying into REITs is actually a hedge against inflation because the prices of real estate, whether it be hard real estate assets or a REIT, actually rise with inflation. And thirdly, REITs have a lower than average correlation with the stock market performance so basically what that means is you'll be able to reduce the volatility of your portfolio by hedging your stocks against real estate. And although over recent history, REITs have tended to underperform the S&P 500, over the long-term horizon, they actually have tended to outperform the S&P 500. So what I'm trying to say is they show to be great investment vehicles over the long-term horizon. But despite these wonderful benefits of REITs, there are three things that investors must realize before even putting a dime into REITs, and that's what I'm going to be clarifying in this video. So if you do enjoy, make sure to hit that like button to support my channel. It really does help me out. And also don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell down below for more weekly investing videos just like this. So with that said, let's jump right into the video. Now guys, the first thing that you need to understand is everything about the REIT dividends. As I alluded to before, one of the main benefits of owning REITs in your investment portfolio is the ability to earn these large dividend payments. For example, if we take a look at Northview Apartments REIT, which is a big REIT over here in Canada, they're actually paying a dividend yield just under 5%. Now this is actually very common amongst REITs because REITs are required to pay out at least 90% of their net income to shareholders otherwise known as the unit holders. However, the dividends paid by REITs are actually not your typical dividends, they're actually known as distributions. And while there are tax relief benefits for normal dividends, distributions don't see the same and they're actually taxed at your highest marginal tax rate. And considering the fact that most people that are investing in REITs are investing for those continuous dividends and that passive income, this can have a detrimental impact on your stock market returns. But there is actually one way to get around this and if you're living in Canada, one way to do that is to own REITs in your tax-free savings account, otherwise known as the TFSA, and that way your distributions are going to be tax-free. And if you are living in the US, this account is equivalent to the Roth IRA for you guys, and so this is the best way that you can avoid these taxes on the distributions and get the best bang for your buck when you're buying a REIT. Now there's actually another thing that investors need to be aware of, and as I discussed before, REITs are required to pay out at least 90% of their net income to shareholders in the form of these distributions. And basically what that means is that in bad economic times, it could be more likely that these companies actually cut their dividends or their distributions. This is because when we look at a REIT's payout ratio in terms of their funds from operations or their FFO, and this is supposed to be used instead of their earnings per share quantity, we actually find that their payout ratios are typically in the range of 70 to 90%. So if the earnings decrease by a factor of 10 to 30%, the REITs will technically not be able to sustain that distribution over the long term. But how likely would it be that their earnings drop that far? Well, it really depends on the type of REIT that you buy into. Commercial REITs that own large office buildings with triple net leases of about 10 to 30 years in length are probably a lot more sheltered than residential with shorter term leases. And it really is company specific depending on how much cash they have on their balance sheet so companies with a lot more cash will be able to sustain that distribution a lot longer than companies without much cash. So anyways these are some real concerns that investors must be aware of when it comes to REIT distributions. And now let's take a look at another issue that REIT investors must face. Now one very common thing that happens amongst many REITs across the world is actually share dilution otherwise known as unit dilution. Now because REITs are required to pay out at least 90% of their net income to shareholders they actually retain very little cash flow that they can put back into the business to invest for future growth projects or expansion projects. Therefore, in order to be able to grow over time, REITs will raise capital in the form
form of debt and equity from its investors. So if you are an owner of a REIT and then a REIT raises some new equity as capital, that actually means that your shares are going to be diluted. And as a result of this, REITs almost always have increasing share counts over time, which is totally contrary to many other companies out there. But is this really a major concern to investors? Well, clearly not because people are still happy to invest in REITs and get those distribution payments on a consistent basis. But the one thing you do need to realize is because of these share dilutions, your distributions and your dividend payments are probably not going to grow that quickly over time, if at all. For example, let's take another look at the Northview Apartments REIT, which is a pretty popular one over here in Canada. So at the beginning of 2018, Northview Apartments had 59 million issued and outstanding units. And comparing this to the beginning of 2019, they actually had over 65 million issued and outstanding units, which signifies that they are diluting their units. Now, if we take a look at their dividends, we actually find that this company is a monthly dividend payer of about 13 cents per share per month. But as we can see, the company has not been able to increase that distribution over the past five years, which is likely a result of these unit dilutions. Because each time the company adds more units into the open market, they're going to have to pay distribution on those units and so it costs them more money but they're not able to increase the amount that they're paying per unit. Now as an investor you might not even care about the fact that it's not increasing over time because they are paying just under a 5% dividend yield right now but by the same token you could be investing in a company that does have a very high dividend yield to start but is also increasing those dividends over time just like the Royal Bank of Canada. Just take a look at this history. So that is just something to consider before investing in certain REITs and now let's take a look at the third and final thing that you must understand before investing in REITs. So if you're an investor looking for capital appreciation rather than consistent income, investing in REITs might not be for you. Now as an example, let's take a look at the Canadian REIT index ETF with ticker symbol ZRE.TO and ever since 2006, the share price has only increased just over 10%. Now that is not to say that all REITs are not able to grow their share prices, but this does show that for the most part, you're not going to be seeing a whole lot of capital appreciation. And here's why. As we all know by now, REITs are required to pay out at least 90% of their net income to the unit holders, and this actually leaves them very little cash left over to reinvest back into the business to grow through capital appreciation. Additionally, we also find the effect of share dilutions reducing the value of the existing shares so that makes it very tough for the companies to grow their share price. Now to help clarify this topic a little bit more let's take a look at the opposite scenario whereby companies like Visa, MasterCard, Microsoft, Apple, and Royal Bank of Canada all institute share repurchase programs. These companies do this to effectively reduce the number of outstanding shares which will actually improve their per share metrics like their earnings per share or EPS. And this is in the hope that the per share metrics increasing will actually result in higher stock prices over time. Well, the opposite can be true for REITs where their total earnings and their total cash flow may be increasing over time but their earnings per share and their cash flow per share may not be. And that is one of the major reasons why REITs don't see as much capital appreciation as other investment vehicles like stock. It's something very important to understand before investing into a specific REIT, because if that management is not effective in deploying the capital, they may not be increasing those per share metrics over time. So next time you're looking at a REIT's financial statements, don't look at the overall cash flow and how much it's increased. Look at the cash flow per share or the funds from operations per share to see if it's actually going to be increasing despite all of the share dilution. But anyways, that wraps up this video. I really hope you did enjoy and gain some value from this video. And I just want to finish off by saying that I don't think that REITs are bad investments by any means. I just think that investors need to understand these things before investing in REITs. And with that said, if you did enjoy this video, make sure to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. And don't forget to subscribe down below for more weekly investing videos just like this and I will see you guys in the next one.